What a heavyweight talent. We will have Grace the UFC Octagon, the undefeated professional with 10 finish wins, 11 wins undefeated, and eight of them in the first round. Let's have a look at the giant from the mountains in Shamil Gaziev. Oh, two's out! It's over! It's over! It's over! It's over! It's over, Munoz! Shamil has had a little bit of an amateur career in his background with eight fights coming against competition that definitely gave him great in-cage experience. He was a 7-2 and two amateur. His amateur wins came in the IMMAF. He was a 2019 World Championship bronze medalist and also won gold in the African, Asian, and European male heavyweight division all in 2019, and then debuted to the professional mixed martial arts scene in 2020. The debut would come for Belarusian Fighting Championship, and Shamil took out his opponent in under half a minute. Huge takedown, easy ground and pound, really didn't look like a contest. He rode that momentum through another six wins, finishing all of these opponents, including a second round finish in a much more renowned fighting organization in Fight Nights Global. And the Fight Night Global fight was an absolute war for how long it lasted, but Shamil ultimately got his opponent out of there in the first minute of the second round with a barrage of knee strikes. Also to note, Shamil won the Russian Union of MMA heavyweight title in a two-day tournament where he won two straight fights. With all of that success compiling more and more and the impressive undefeated record, we would get a matchup between him and another undefeated prospect in Aries FC on their seventh event, and this would be against a 13-0 competitor, and this fight has far and away been the toughest of Shamil's career. This was Shamil's first time in France and second time at nearly the highest level of regional mixed martial arts in my opinion and the first round kind of looked like a breeze for Gaziev landing a takedown in the opening seconds of the round and riding that top control through the entire first round leading into the second the second round however we saw that this fight was going to be closer than we thought and we saw the area's Krill would earn points landing big strikes in the stand-up in the opening sequence of the second round, but again, Shamil Gaziev's great equalizer, his takedown, and really his strength in positions that are very difficult to take down heavyweight opponents. So in this spot, he landed a rear body lock takedown at around 421, but his opponent was privy to it, searching for a Kimura, which actually reversed the position and allowed his opponent to get back to his feet against the fence. Then in the striking, once again, the fight jumping between grappling and striking, his opponent looked a lot better on the feet, but Shamil, a visible monster with elite strength for the heavyweight division, continued to chase takedowns and thought looking visibly tired at different points in the fight his takedowns from the rear body lock where he controlled position were perfectly put to earn himself a split decision in the spot while mostly outmatched on the feet even after the fight he looked very tired putting everything he had into the performance according to Aries's stats he was outstruck by his opponent but the four takedowns were the difference Shamil would be back in the cage four months later, this time, in my opinion, for one of the premier regional organizations in Brave Combat Federation, and Shamil got back to his dominating ways. He would KO his first opponent in the second round with a brutal knockout in the opening minute of the second round, and then he landed a knockout of the former light heavyweight in Darko Stoicic, which got him on the map of the UFC and ultimately got him a call to come onto the Contender Series and show his skills against the best of competition. This Contender Series fight would be a matchup against, again, an under defeated heavyweight, but this time the level of competition and the skills shown were, were drastically different between the two fighters in Shamil's favor in this instance, and he entered as nearly the 6-1 to one favorite. He came in with an 8.5 inch reach advantage to go along with 2 inches in height, and right out of the gate he proved that 6-1 to one line very, very correct, landing a massive right hand to drop Velasco and would try to land some ground and pound, but Shamil would actually give up his back trying to land some ground and pound. And at this point, though, Shamil Gaziev showed his skills on the ground and was able to play the positions wisely, staying very calm. He was able to reverse the position into his own top control. And from there, Gaziev had very little difficulty breezing through transitions, finding his way to mount on the much smaller Velasco. And with little options, Velasco had to give up his back. And Gaziev quickly locked in a rear naked choke, again, with very little resistance from his opponent. I think Velasco would have done things a little bit differently if he had gotten the opportunity again. But for Shamil Gaziev, this would be his entry into the UFC and his most recent fight. Now he gets to take on a very, very elite heavyweight in Martin Budai. I've made a video on him. You can check that out on YouTube, also on this channel. But 
I think it's going to be a very close fight. I think that Shamil's grappling could give him an edge here, but I'm still worried about his gas tank. I don't think that he has a lot of stamina in the heavyweight division, and I think if this fight goes over two and a half rounds, this could get really sloppy with both guys getting really tired. But that'll do it for today's video. If you guys enjoyed, remember to smash that like button and subscribe to Combat Sports Central for more insights into fighters, bet predictions, and more. And I will see you in the next one. Peace out, guys.